Hello, I'm Odin, and today I'm going to make another requested prop. It's the Blades of Chaos from God of War, specifically God of War 4, because that way it'll match my Leviathan axe. Boy. Most online sources say the blades are about 25 centimeters long. I printed out some of the game artwork to be exactly that size, and then taped the sheets together so I could cut out my pattern. First, I'm just tracing the blade onto a sheet of floor mat foam from Harbor Freight Tools. This mat is a soft EVA foam and is textured on one side. I add contact cement to the smooth side, spreading the cement thinner with a scrap piece of foam. I add two coats, and once the cement is mostly dry and ready, then stick the cutout down onto a second piece of foam. I want these blades to be a little thicker, and this floor mat may be a little too thick, but it's going to work fine. I cut the second piece after I glue them together because it's easier than trying to line up two halves perfectly when contact cement doesn't give you a second chance. Once the parts stick together, you're stuck with it. I use my scroll saw with a multi-directional blade to cut out the parts. Now it leaves a rough edge, but it's really easy to cut out all of these curves that are on the blade. I put the texture on the outside so I could remove it, and then the seam that will be on the knife edge will be as small as possible. The random orbit sander will work, but my belt sander is much faster. With all the sides smoother, I cut the beveled knife edge from my pattern, but I leave two points still attached. That way I have some reference for what my center should be. You could just eyeball it and place it where it looks good, but I like having a point of reference. Everything inside the line needs to stay flat, and the outside is the sharpened edge. Now with my Sakarian swords that I made for Thor, I used a little one inch belt sander to sharpen the blades, but they were all straight lines and a smaller angle. This time I opted for cutting out each side by hand with a thin razor knife, and then using my Dremel, I can smooth out the cut marks. The blades of chaos look a little rough anyway. This is gonna help that with the look. I'm just using a grinding stone bit in my Dremel. The sanding drum works as well, but the stone doesn't remove as much material and it leaves a smoother surface. I traced where the skulls and teeth need to be, and then I could mark where I wanted to cut the wooden dowel so I could use it as a grip for the blades. I marked the center of the blade and use a small hole saw to cut out the foam to make room for the grips. Then I'll mark the wood and cut the dowel down to size on my bandsaw. Now even though they're going to be hidden, I sanded the sides down to be closer to the thickness of the blade and a little Gorilla Glue will hold the wood in place with no problem. The hilt looks like it's wrapped with some sort of jagged leather, so I make a simple paper pattern and cut up 14 pieces of some 2mm craft foam. There are 7 wraps on each grip, plus some extra around the pommel. I start the wraps at the pommel so the layers can fall right, and I try to space them knowing that I want 7 on each grip. It takes some time to wrap it all with contact cement, but I won't worry about them coming undone later. The blades themselves are not shiny and new, they're battle-worn and, well, chaotic. So first, I take a file and I make some long, deep grooves and cuts into the blades. And then for some even bigger nicks, I just cut out a piece with a razor knife. And I just want to make a few. Then I'll use the number 125 Dremel etching bit to carve out a series of cracks at the base of the blade. And this is one detail that is not actually in the first stage for the blades. The deep cracks start at stage two, but I like the way they looked, so I'm going to add a couple anyway. Think of this as the very end of stage one. The blade needs some pitting as well. I use the number 191 high speed cutter and just bounce it off the blade to cut out little divots all over each of the flat sides. I use a grinding stone bit again to carve out some details in the grips, just some engraved lines to keep the foam strips from being too flat. I use a heat gun to seal the foam up, and it shrinks the fuzzy edges. The heat gun also opens up all the cracks and cuts just a little more, which is good. Now some people are happy with just using a heat gun to close the open cells of the foam so that they can paint it. I still plan to seal my project with plastic tip later. To make the skulls, I'm going to use a new product called Foam Mo. Now this is the first time that I've ever used an EVA foam clay, and I thought the organic shapes of the skulls would be a great use. Foam Mo is an air dry EVA clay, and it does sculpt pretty easily. It's a little spongier than actual clay, and it's not as dense, and it's not quite as easy to cut. But with a little water, it sticks easily to EVA foam and to itself. 
and I'm using a tool for wax sculpting to add wrinkles and to smooth out between pieces, and the back of a paintbrush for bigger areas. Just roll out a piece, pinch it, stick it down in place. I just built up each detail, layering over what I had to build up the skull face. Once the foam mo was actually safe to handle, because I didn't want to squish the side I had already made, I started working on the other side of each blade. And I was really happy with everything about the skulls, except that back hook on the cross guard. It was really difficult for me to get a good mechanical look with the foam mo. And it took me about 45 minutes per side on each blade to sculpt the skulls. So it was just over three and a half hours total. But the clay is clean, it left no residue in my hands, and it didn't have any bad chemical smells when it was wet or even when I was sanding it. Once both sides are dry, I use a Dremel to get the flat surfaces that I want on the foreheads of the skulls and those back curves for the cross guard blades. And this worked really well. It carved very easily, but it did expose some large air holes that was in the clay. I cleaned the surface and coated only the areas that had those big holes with Flex Seal. These holes are too big for the spray version of Plasti Dip to fill, so I thought I would try this. It drives very smooth and really glossy, which is something to remember for a future project. To make the pommels, I glue three layers of EVA floor mat together and just trace the bottom fork. The top cap I will add later. Cutting three layers in the scroll saw is easy, much easier than sanding these little parts on my belt sander. With both pommels shaped the way that I want them, I heat a strip of styrene plastic to make the cap. The Blades of Chaos have chains attached to them, and I bought some lightweight decorative chain to do that, but it will need something a little stronger than just foam to attach to. Cut the styrene, glue the styrene, and sand the pommel. And I want to do more than just glue these on, so I cut down some carbon fiber rod, and I drill out a hole in both the pommels and the wooden grips. With a bit of Gorilla Glue, the pommels will be pretty secure on the grips. They should be able to be swung around because, you know, that's going to happen at some con. Someone is going to swing these around by the chain. I was going to wait for everything to dry and I can start painting it. The Gorilla Glue didn't foam up much, so I had nothing to clean up, which is nice. And with the holes in each pommel, I can hang the blades from a coat hanger to paint them easier. I cover each blade with two coats of Plasti Dip and then a bright silver spray paint. I like how well the spray paint sticks to the Plasti Dip. I think it holds better than just directly on the foam. I mix up some acrylic craft paints and make a light leather color and paint the grips first. Since it's cold in my shop, I set out a small fan and the acrylic paints will dry faster. Then I use a brilliant gold color on the skulls. Now the gold paint didn't cover in a single coat, so I brushed on just a few coats, avoiding brush marks and not having built up places in the paint. It took about three coats to cover the silver with gold. I used brown shoe polish on the grips to create a wash of darker color and to get a rich tone in the leather brown. I try to wipe off the high places and just leave the shadows in the polish. After the brown dried, I used some black shoe polish on the silver and gold, watering down the shoe polish with a spray of water first. I really like the metal color that I get from this black wash over the bright spray paint. It knocks down the super brilliant silver and gold from looking like a Christmas ornament. And you can skip the water step and get an even darker metal color if you want. I wipe away as much of the drips as I can as I go, even on the undersides. You can wipe them off later after they dry, but that could hurt the paint. I also just add a little bit of black to the hilt, just at the details and then fully coat the pommels. These guys really need to be darkened up. The last touch is to add the decorative chain. This silver colored chain came with this great black overspray, so all I needed to do is force open a ring and clamp it to each pommel. There you go. I have about seven feet of chain that I've attached to each blade, and then I can wrap around each arm. And it's really nice not having Athena taunt you about it the whole time while you're doing it. Most of the materials I used for this project, I picked up locally. I put a part list in the description. And I've completed the Blades of Chaos from God of War. Now these are just completely, 
EVA foam. There really isn't anything else inside, so they still have some flex to them, but because the blades are so wide, I really wasn't worried about that, so I wasn't concerned about having a full handle that went all the way through to keep it stiff. One thing I'm pleased with is the foam mo that I had used for the skulls. I got a really good organic shape, I think, on these skulls. I've seen other sites where they've actually just used thin foam and kind of folded it to make the skulls, or they would actually just kind of grind them out with a Dremel, both of which work perfectly well, but this, this worked really well for me, which I'm glad because this is how Odin makes. I want to say thank you to all of my Patreon subscribers. You guys really help with keeping this channel going. If you like this video or have any ideas for something for me to make, please leave a comment below. And if you build any of these projects, you can send me a picture. Come on, <laughs> it's great. The chain's way more than the sword. Oh, f you. <laughs>